So you want to talk aliens, so. Who does it, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you've gone deeper than just wondering, haven't you? You sent us a whole stack about this story, science, even some of your own experiences. That tells me you're not just here for the uh, little green men cliches. It's fascinating how this topic pulls at us. It's almost primal, isn't it? Like figuring out if there's other life out there somehow helps us make sense of our own being here at all. Exactly. And it's not new either. I mean, our ancient ancestors were looking up at the same stars, probably telling themselves some pretty wild tales about what was up there. Right. Then we get to Roswell in 47, and uh, well, the... boom, UFOs are everywhere in pop culture. Yeah, Roswell is a great example of how a good mystery can really capture the public imagination. Never mind that the official explanation was, I mean, it was pretty mundane. People still debate what really happened. Well, it sparked it's... something that went way beyond that one event. Yeah, and while folks were, you know, chasing lights in the sky, scientists were starting to get serious about the search, too. You included some really cool research in your notes. This isn't just UFO chasers anymore. This is hardcore science. Right, and that's where exoplanets come in. Up until a few decades ago, we could only speculate about planets around other stars. Uh. Now we've discovered thousands. Wow, really? Not just a handful, but enough to have some seriously interesting candidates. Okay, so we've got other planets. But how do we even begin to figure out if there's life on them, especially when some are, what, light years away? That's where the kind of the detective work of uh, biosignatures comes into play. Think of it like this. Every living thing leaves a trace, a sort of fingerprint. On a planetary scale, that fingerprint could be certain gases in the atmosphere. Finding those telltale signs, it's like striking gold for an astronomer. That's yeah. So we're talking about analyzing the air of a planet that's ridiculously far away to see if something's breathing on it. Yeah. That's that's next level stuff. And it's not just limited to these far off worlds either. Your research also touched on missions right here in our cosmic neighborhood, like uh, the Mars rovers, for example. Yeah. Oh, right. Searching for signs of past or present life. Mm -hmm. And then you have the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn. Those are fascinating, too. You're talking about Europa and Enceladus, right? I remember reading about those. Yeah. They have these huge oceans under the ice, right? Like more water than Earth. Exactly. They're, I mean, they're prime candidates for microbial life. So the search isn't just pointed at the stars. It's happening right here in our own solar system. Wow. Makes you wonder what we might find, doesn't it? You know, all this talk of like far off planets and icy moons it's easy to forget that the search for extraterrestrial life hits closer to home, too. That's true. Yeah. For as long as we've, you know, gazed at the stars, there have been stories of encounters right here on Earth. And you included some of those stories in the materials you sent us. In mm -hmm. fact, you even mentioned having an experience yourself. Oh, are you talking about the uh, the lights I saw while camping? Exactly. Yeah. You described seeing strange lights moving in ways that seemed, well, impossible. It obviously stuck with you all these years later. Yeah, it definitely made me wonder. But I also know that, I mean, the human mind can play tricks, and there are often explanations we just don't immediately see. Absolutely. But I think those unexplained events, those moments that make us question everything we thought we knew, they're part of what makes this whole topic so captivating. Yeah. And sometimes those personal experiences, even without concrete proof, can be a springboard for you know, scientific inquiry. I completely agree. After all, at the heart of every scientific discovery is a question, a curiosity about how things work. Speaking of big questions, let's say just for a moment, that we do find definitive proof of alien life. Okay. Your research dug into this, what would it mean for humanity? Right. It's like, it's like something out of a movie, right? Yeah, it's, it's a question that's fascinated thinkers for centuries. Mm -hmm. And as you found in your research, the implications are, I mean, they're really profound. On a cultural level alone, we've built, I mean, entire narratives around this idea of extraterrestrial life. Right. Imagine the shift if those narratives became reality. And it's not just pop culture, right? What about, like, our understanding of science and technology? Exactly. Yeah. Let's take, let's take the discovery of microbial life, for example. Finding life that evolved independently of Earth right. that would completely revolutionize our understanding of biology. It would be like a crash course in a whole new tree of life. It would be like getting the answer key to the biggest exam ever, but the answers are in a language we're just starting to understand. Right, exactly. And if we're talking intelligent life, the like the tech side of things could be mind-blowing. Absolutely. Imagine, imagine the technology 
a civilization capable of interstellar travel might possess. Right. Propulsion systems, communication technologies, it could be light years ahead of anything we can currently imagine. Yeah. It's both exciting and a little intimidating, right? Oh, absolutely. Like, what if their version of an iPhone could, like solve climate change but also accidentally open a black hole yeah and that's not even getting into the like the religious and philosophical questions you dug up some fascinating articles on that yeah it's a whole other layer of complexity imagine <laughs> imagine a civilization mm -hmm. with a completely different understanding of creation of the meaning of life mm -hmm. or or imagine discovering an alien civilization that also grapples with you know faith and spirituality right how would that impact our own beliefs? Would it would it shade the foundations or would it create this kind of sense of shared experience across the cosmos? Some heavy stuff to ponder, that's for sure. Yeah. And I have a feeling our listener has even more questions than answers at this point. Probably. Which is good. That's what we want, right? Absolutely. Because the search for knowledge, it's a journey, not a destination. Yeah. And sometimes asking the right questions is even more important than having all the answers. It's kind of dizzying, you know, when you really let your mind go there, isn't it? The sheer scale of what we're talking about, the yeah. possibility of like other life forms, maybe even, I don't know, other intelligences out there. It's a lot to wrap your head around. And your research brought up, you know, another layer of complexity here, the ethics of it all. Right. It's not just about, you know, finding answers, but about how we go about it, what we do with that knowledge once we have it. There was a really interesting point in one of the articles you sent us, something about how our approach to this whole search, it says a lot about us as a species. Absolutely. As we develop, you know, increasingly sophisticated technologies to search for extraterrestrial life, we have to ask ourselves some tough questions. I mean, should we be actively sending out signals, essentially shouting into the cosmic void, here we are? Mm -hmm. Or is it wiser, at least for now, to just, you know, listen and observe? It's like that old saying, uh, better to be thought a fool. Than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Exactly. And then there's the question of contact. If we, you know, if we do find evidence of an alien civilization, how do we proceed? Who speaks for Earth? I mean, these aren't hypothetical questions anymore. These have real world implications. Especially now that it's not just governments running the show. You mentioned, like, how private companies are getting involved in space exploration now. Right. What happens when it's, you know, a CEO, not a president, making decisions about, like, first contact, wild stuff? It's a brave new world out there, both literally and figuratively. And as we, you know, as we push further into the cosmos, we're going to have to grapple with these ethical considerations in ways we haven't even imagined yet. It makes you realize all this amazing science, these incredible discoveries, they're only part of the story, yeah. right? The bigger picture is about how we, as human beings, choose to define ourselves in the face of the unknown. Well said. Yeah. And that, I think, is what makes this whole search for extraterrestrial life so compelling. Hmm. It's not just about what's out there, but about who we are and what we'll become as we you know, continue to explore. You've given us a lot to think about today, that's for sure. It's funny, we started with a simple question, are we alone? And now, you know, we're left with even more questions, but I think that's a good thing, wouldn't you say? I absolutely agree. Because the most important questions in life, they rarely have easy answers. It's the journey, the exploration, that's what truly matters. Well said. And on that note, to our listener, thank you for taking this deep dive with us. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and who knows, maybe someday we'll have those answers. Until then, keep looking up.